Hey, what's up, guys? K is Kirali here. In this video, I will show you how to do boot Kali Linux 2020 with Windows 10, meaning you will be able to install Kali Linux alongside with Windows operating system on the same drive, like side by side, without any data loss. The guide which I will be showing in a moment is one of the easiest and safest ways that you could consider following it of installing Kali Linux on any PC or laptop. Also at the end of this video, I will show you how to uninstall Kali Linux from Duo Boot safely. Now keep in mind this method will work on any PC having UEFI or GPT as well as MBR and BIOS combinations. Now as per my testing, if you follow this video carefully, you will be able to successfully do boot your PC or laptop with Kali Linux 2020. The prerequisites of this video, you need a Windows 10 running on your PC or laptop. Next, you need an 8 gigs or higher pen drive to create a bootable disk with Kali Linux. Lastly, you need to reserve a free space of 20 gigabytes or higher from your drive. That being said, moving into step number one, downloading the required files. Now open your favorite browser and go to the official website of Kali Linux and download the latest version. By the time of recording this video, Kali Linux 2020.3 is the latest version available to download. Kali Linux 2020 is available in both 32-bit and 64-bit installers as well as live bootable images. If in case you want to install Kali Linux using a virtual box, I made a separate video, you can go ahead, check the link in the description box down below. For now, I will be choosing a Kali Linux 64-bit installer ISO file. You can either download it in a normal way or use any BitTorrent client application to download the ISO image file. Now the second link in the description will take you to this page where you have to download a tool named Win32 Disk Imager. This tool helps us creating a valid bootable pen drive with Kali Linux. Step number two, creating a bootable drive. Now once it is done downloading all of the files, place it somewhere on your computer for easier navigation. Now go ahead and connect the pen drive to your PC or laptop and open Win32 Disk Imager. Make sure you have selected the proper drive letter and click on this folder icon and look for the Kali Linux ISO file that you have downloaded and open it. Once it's imported, now click on write to start making a bootable installer with Kali Linux. Sit back and relax, the process will take some time depending on the writing speed of your pen drive. Step number 3, Partitionizing a free space for Kali Linux To set up a do boot to install Kali Linux 2020.3 alongside with Windows 10, you need to create a free space. To do so, open Start menu or Run and type diskmgmt.msc and press the Return key to open Disk Manager. A disk manager is a place where it shows all of the connected drives to your computer. In this case, I have connected only one drive to the computer. The drive 0, which is my SSD, I'm going to use this drive to shrink a free space for Kali Linux. If you notice carefully, inside this drive, I have only three partitions. The one is named as a system reserved, and the other one is the main C partition, and the last one is a recovery partition. I'm going to use a C drive to shrink a free space. Now in your case, you can shrink the free space from the last partition. So right click on the partition and choose shrink volume. For Kali Linux 64 bit, you need at least 25 gigs or higher. In this case, I'm going to allocate a 40 GB of free space for Kali Linux.
As you can see, the free space is showing as unallocated, which is where we will be installing a Kali Linux in a moment. Step number four, installing Kali. Now go ahead and reboot your computer. While rebooting your PC, press F10 on your keyboard to open up the boot menu. Here you can select your drive name. In this case, it is showing my drive as SanDisk. And I'm gonna choose this option to boot the Kali Linux setup. You can only use this boot menu option if your pen drive is not automatically booting into Kali Linux. Now choose graphical install option. Now here choose the language. In this case I will choose English as my default system language. Next up choose your location and keyboard layout. Now the installer setup will start loading all of the components, wait for a few seconds. If in case you see any prompt like missing firmware from removal media, choose yes to fix the issues. Now here you can type the host name. In this case, I will type it as a Kali. And in the domain section, I will leave it as empty. Now here you need to create a new user account. Go ahead, type your name in here and click on continue. And now go ahead, set the password for the user account and click on continue. It's time to create a partitions for Kali Linux. In this video, I will be creating a manual partitions and I will choose the manual option over here and continue. Now it will list all of the drives connected to the PC or laptop. This is the only SSD that I have connected and it's showing over here. Inside this drive, as you can see, all of the Windows related partitions along with the free space that we have created in step number three are showing. We're going to use this free space to create a three partitions. The one is going to be a boot, a root, as well as swap area. You can also use a separate partition for home if you need it so. For now, I will stick with three partitions only. First, I'm going to create a boot partition where it will store all of the bootable files of the Kali Linux. To do so, select the free space and click on continue. Then click on create a new partition and here you can allocate a 1 gig for boot partition. The file system for this partition will be xt4 journaled and the mounting point is set to be as forward slash boot. As you can see, we have successfully done creating a boot partition. In the same way, we need to create a root partition. Again, select the free space, click on continue, then click on create new partition. And in here, you can allocate a minimum of 20 gigs for root partition. In my case, I will use a 35 GB of free space for root and continue. And the file system for this partition will be xt4 journaled and the mounting point is set to be as forward slash. Once it's done, click on continue. Now we have done creating a two main partitions. It's time to create a swap area. A swap area acts as a virtual RAM if your system has less amount of physical memory. For example, if your system has 4 gigs of physical memory, then allocate a 4 gigs of swap area to make the system more responsive. For those who are having more than 16 gigs of RAM, swap area is not needed. Anyway, to create a swap partition, 
choose the remaining amount of free space and continue. Here instead of XT4, we're going to use it as a swap area and finish the changes. That's it, now we have successfully done creating 3 partitions. Now go ahead click on finish to make the changes to the disk. As you can see these are the 3 new partitions will be created, click on continue. Now the installer setup will start installing the basic system files. Now once it is done, you will be presented with this menu where you have to choose your favorite desktop environment. You can choose GNOME, KDE Plasma and XFCE. In my case, I'm going to install GNOME desktop environment and click on continue. Now sit back and relax, the installation process may take some time depending on the writing speeds of the disk. Once it's done, go ahead and restart the computer. While it's restarting, the computer take out of your pen drive. Now by default, it will boot into Call It Linux Grub Bootloader, where you can either boot into Windows 10 or Call It Linux. For now, let's boot into Call It Linux. That's it, this is how you do boot Kali Linux with Windows 10. If you want to boot into a Windows 10, go ahead restart the computer. From the grub menu, choose Windows option to boot into Windows 10. As a bonus part of the video, if in case you don't like Kali Linux and decided to uninstall it, then reboot your computer to Windows 10. So this process may not gonna be remove any data on Windows 10. Now keep in mind, this final part will only work for UEFI or GPT based systems. For those who are using BIOS and MBR combination, I made a separate video on how to uninstall it. So go ahead, check the link to the video in the description. Now open disk manager by typing this command inside the start menu or run dialog box. Here next to C drive you can see three healthy partitions which we have created while installing Kali Linux. Go ahead remove all these three partitions one by one. And now you will see an unallocated free space that you can expand this free space into a Windows OS. Now go ahead, type CMD into the run dialog box and run as administrator. Here type disk part.
Now type list disk. This will show all of the connected drives to the computer. In my case, I have connected only one drive, which is where Windows and Kali Linux bootable files are installed. Now select this drive by typing select disk and the number of the disk. This will select the disk. Now type list partition to list out all of the partitions on this drive. You might see a 3 plus partitions. What we need to do is we have to use the system partition to remove the grub bootloader from the drive. To do so, type select partition and the number of the system partition. Once it's selected, type assign letter is equals to X to mount this partition temporarily. Now type exit to get out of the disk part manager. Now type X colon. This will change the directory. Here type dir to list off the contents of the partition. Now change the directory into EFI by typing CD EFI. Again, if I type DIR, this will list the contents of the EFI folder. Here you can see Call it Linux bootable files. And you have to delete this folder, otherwise your system will be stuck into a grub rescue. Any way to fix that kind of issue, type this command RD space Kali and forward slash S and type Y to remove the Kali Linux grub manager. That's it. Now we have successfully and safely removed Kali Linux without any data loss on the Windows 10. Now restart your computer, it should directly boot your system into Windows 10 and you won't face any grub rescue issues. This is how you properly set up a dual boot on your Windows computer. And that's pretty much it. If in case you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down there and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and consider clicking the bell icon to get notified whenever I post a new video. Thanks for watching. This has been KSKRIL. I will catch you in my next one. Peace.